Joining me is Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Now, Mayor Bottoms, you're going to be speaking at the DNC Thursday night with the night pack with heavy hitters. That's a huge stage to be on. Tell us the message that you plan on bringing Thursday night. Well, I can't give away the entire speech, but I, I will tell you that I will certainly highlight um, the legacy of who we are as a city. And it is such an honor to be a part of this, uh, an, a personal honor to be invited to speak, but it really speaks to the value that the nation sees in Atlanta. Uh, to have a mayor of Atlanta as a part of this historic night is really something that should be celebrated, um, uh, that our city should be proud of and, and, and really celebrated for the, the level of respect and regard um, that people across this country have for our city. You were a little bit modest there, so I'll go ahead and throw it in for you. I'll do a little insert for you. Mayor of Atlanta speaking on a huge night like that at the DNC, the mayor who was also on the short list for VP. Tell us about that day for you and when the announcement came out that Kamala Harris was Joe Biden's VP pick and what that even meant for you to be on the short list. Well, it was a big deal personally, and it was really interesting uh, as I would watch television and read stories and the speculation, and I would think they don't have any idea what's happening in this process. Um, I went through several interviews, had to give over a lot of documents, and so it was um, it was a nerve-wracking process. But again, out of 330 million folk in America, to be a part of the process was an honor. And um, I interviewed with the vice president the Saturday before the announcement was made. I think the announcement was made on a Tuesday. Um, so he had told me then that he was going to make a decision that Monday or Tuesday. And he called that Tuesday afternoon about 1245 or so to tell me that it was not me. He didn't tell me who he was choosing. But he told me he was going to make the announcement at 4 o'clock that afternoon. So I was a little more disappointed than I actually thought that I, I would have been. But I, when you go that far in a process like that, then um, certainly, you know, you, you're in it to win it, so to speak. But that being said, the fact that Kamala Harris was chosen, and this is such a, a historic moment for us, as a country, the fact that there will be a woman and then on top of that, a woman of color um, on the ticket, and I know they're going to win in November, is something that we should all celebrate. And I'm so very excited uh, for the direction and the opportunity we have to go in a different course in this country. So we know you've been going hard for Joe Biden for quite a while, and Atlanta still has a mayor named Keisha, but could we have a mayor who becomes a part of the Biden cabinet should the Dems bring this home in November? You know, I haven't gotten that far. I mean, I there's a really big job uh, that I have right now, and that's being mayor of Atlanta. And so we'll get to November. We'll see what happens in November. But my focus continues to be on our city and to continue to do the job I was elected to do. And once again, putting our city in the national spotlight, how do you think that this has changed this year with the convention being virtual? You've heard it time and time again. This is one of the most historic elections. People say it is one of the most important. How do you think the virtual aspect is going to change, even with you having to prepare to deliver that speech, not in person? Yeah, everything is different. I mean, for, for me, I don't know in terms of, of being a part of um, the the uh, a, a big part of a convention, I've never had that experience. In fact, the last convention, I ended up getting stuck in New York in a, a thunderstorm and had to spend the night in the Delta Lounge. So the fact that I'm a part of this um, is, a, again, a huge deal for me and something that's very different. But I think what we see happening with the convention is representative of 2020. Nothing's been normal about 2020. But that being said, last night, I, I got chills watching the roll call from the various states. It was so moving and seeing the stories and having an opportunity for a cross section of people to be a visible part of the convention. I think it's a silver lining in all of this. 
And I would venture to say it's given people across the country an opportunity to feel a part of the convention um, in a way that they otherwise might not feel if they weren't in Milwaukee. Yeah, the internet really has given us a little bit of a uh, inside insider access that we wouldn't usually get. So it's it's not traditional again, very relative to 2020. Speaking of that, uh, we have seen the way that Georgia has handled uh, COVID-19 from a city's perspective and on a statewide perspective now being listed as the number one place in the country of COVID-19 transmission. Not a list that we want to scream we're number one about for sure. What's been your response to the latest executive order from Governor Kemp? I wish that he had gone further, but I am glad to see that other cities across the state are instituting mask mandates. But um, the, where our negotiations broke down were based on the governor's insistence that businesses be able to opt in or opt out, whether or not they will have a mask mandate, and also whether or not businesses could pick and choose who enforced that mandate? That was a, a, a that was a non-starter for me. We don't allow businesses to opt in and out of building codes. We don't allow them to opt in and out of fire codes. So something as important as our health, um, I certainly continue to believe that the take the state uh, should take on the responsibility, or at the very least, allow cities to take on the responsibility to mandate mask in businesses but be that as it may it's more than we had and when you look at our numbers it really begs the question why aren't we following the recommendation of the health experts who are saying we need to do more in this state to help flatten the curve in the state we're never going to get to an economic recovery we're never going to get back to normal with our kids in school if we don't take some steps to make sure that this virus, the, the spread of this virus uh, slows down. And it, it, it's unfortunate that we're here as a state and certainly not a distinction that I want us to have or even one that we should have. All right, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms taking the national stage at the DNC on Thursday night. Thank you so much for joining us and best of luck to you on your presentation tomorrow. Thank you.